Ladies and gentlemen, from Turning Stone Resort Casino here in Verona, New York, Eddie Hearn for Matchroom Boxing USA. Tonight in association with World of Boxing and Joe DeGuardia's Star Boxing present the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBA. Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. And it's streamed live to the world on DAZN and broadcast to the United Kingdom on Sky Sports. Sponsored by JD Sports and sanctioned by the Oneida Indian Nation Athletic Commission, Executive Director Dan Gustafson. For the WBA, supervisor in attendance is George Martinez. The three judges scoring, Glenn Feldman, Tom Schreck, Don Trella, and your referee in charge of the action is Gary Rosato. And now the officials are in place and they are ready. The fighters are in the ring and they are ready. Boxing fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, from the Turning Stone Resort Casino, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner with his trainer, Gerard Capobianco. He's wearing white, trimmed with red and blue, and officially weighed in at 173 pounds. His professional record, an excellent one. 24 victories. 20 of those 24 wins by knockout. Only two defeats from Long Island, New York, USA. The challenger, former WBC international heavyweight champion, Joe Smith Jr. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing black trimmed with silver and stands with his head trainer, Gennady Malchinovo. Wearing black with silver, he officially weighs in at 173 and one half pounds. His professional record, a perfect one. 15 fights, 15 victories, including 11 big wins by knockout. Domingos Badai from St. Petersburg, Russia, the reigning and defending undefeated WBA light heavyweight champion of the world, Dmitry. Okay, gentlemen, I gave you specific details and instructions in the locker room. I'm only going to tell you two things. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves, bang at the bell. God bless. Two serious young men in there. Joe Smith Jr., again, hard hitter from Mastic, Long Island. Oldest of eight kids. Owns his own tree trimming company on Long Island against a world-class fighter with a world title belt and the amateur pedigree to back it up. Does Smith have enough? to hang. Can he close the talent gap? Dimitri Bivo has faced some good fighters in his career. He has never faced someone with the power of a Joe Smith. Smith burst onto the world scene, had that huge upset over Andrew Fonfara. Knocked him down twice, stopped him in round one. That was in June of 2016. His claim to fame, of course, is beating the legendary Bernard Hopkins when Bernard was in his 50s, but that was B-Hop's last fight. And Smith did rise to the occasion, Sergio. Yes, he did. I was at the forum, I was there. It was a sad way for a, a legend to go, but that's how legends die hard. And how about that entrance by Joe Smith Jr.? I, I got the chills him coming out to Bruce Springsteen, the whole New York thing. It's a great vibe. The chant is up here. We're in Verona, New York. Not too far away from the International Boxing Hall of Fame. So it is a, a drive. It's quite a drive from Long Island, but the fans have come out. Smith putting a lot of pressure, foot pressure, body pressure, but so far, DeVos handling nicely, fighting behind the jab. Sergio, they feel, Smith's people, that Bivol, you know, is obviously outstanding, but that he's slightly wide and that he can be hit. Do you buy that? No. I think Bivol is all around 
a really good fighter, and I thought he was all puncher, but like he told us, I actually like using my feet. I like fainting. I like looking, like looking for the right shot. I don't just go out there and try to power punch like most people thought. This promoter called him an intellectual fighter. Dimitri Bivol there in the black trunks that, look, defense is a priority. It's not just you know, lip service. Hey, defense is important. No, no, no. He's going to fight defensively, smartly. Flashing out a jab, Bivol throws it out there. Although, again, Smith is the man doing the stalking and backing Bivol up. Good jab again by Bivol. And another. Smith trying to jab with him, but you can see the difference. That's what Smith told us. We asked him, what's the key to this fight? He goes, I got to punch in between his punches. And that's a smart, that was a smart thing, because I hate when fighters punch in between. They know they can't compete with your speed, so they try to time you. Smith trying to do that now, too, just trying to paw out the jab and get close enough to land a hard right hand. Punch out, punch out, punch out. <laughs> One thing about Bebo, he does not go to the body a lot, so Smith can be aware of that as he tries to go inside. Bivol fairly effective with that jab, and there with a short hook. That was dangerous. Again, Smith has never been down, even though he's had his jaw broken twice in his career. 10 seconds, 10 seconds is for the bell. Good body shot there by Bivol, and he tries with a hook at the end of round one. Just relax, relax. You hit him twice, sit down. Just let him punch in the air. His left hand is dead. And there is royalty in the house. Sweet Pea, Pernell Whitaker. One of the greatest of all time. I was totally going to be a fanboy. He was outside get, uh, signing autographs, but I had a job to do. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite fighters of all time. Oh, my God. What, 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 what an unbelievable skillful fighter, one of the best defensive fighters in the history of the sport. Yeah, I think you make the case the best defensive fighter in the history of the sport. Round two here, WBA title fight, 175 pounds, Dimitri Bivol in the black trunks. Joe Smith with the white trunks with the stars and the sleeve. Sergio, your thoughts on Smith in round one and what he was attempting to do. Attempting is a good word because uh, he came forward, tried to pressure like he normally does. He, he loves applying pressure and making boxers uncomfortable, but Bivol passed the test. He looked for the right shots. He doesn't waste punches, Bivol does. He just looks for the right ones with the technique, and that's where the power translates. And you can see, again, the, the telltale sign is the jab. You see, Smith is throwing the jab. He's not landing the jab. Bivol has a classy jab. It's short, tight, it lands. A power jab. You're right, it's not a feather duster. Hits hard. Smith relatively inactive. Only one fight in 2017, only one in 2018. His management was trying to get him a fight with a big name. They thought they had Artur Betterbiev locked up in November, but that fell through. That fight instead given to Callum Johnson. We saw Johnson bounce back with a win here earlier. But it is difficult, Chris Maddox, to navigate and get the fights you need, even when there's multiple champions. Yeah, because of the alignment of so many fighters. Archer Betterbiev, that fight initially was earmarked for HBO. Well, back in November of last year, HBO goes out of business. Joe Smith comes over to this side of the street. He gets his shot at Dimitri Bivol. Smith coming forward, trying to tuck his head, his jaw at least, underneath his left shoulder. So trying to come in defensively sound. But Bebo already starting to pick up that space and get in the pocket. Finding his range with the jab. He's looking to counter punch with those jabs. Those, those are power jabs right there. But if you time it well while Smith is coming in, they're like straight right hands. 
and you could see, even when Smith was regrouping there for a moment, Bivol sensed it and moved in. Smith is a little discouraged. I hate to say that with such a brave fighter, but you could tell he's a little discouraged with Bivol's power and the timing and the pop behind it. And again, when he, Sergio, tried to take that little break, let me regroup, Bivol said, oh, no, 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 you're not breathing. I'm coming at you in a nice combination. Champ with a classy combination. Ten seconds, ten seconds, Straight ahead with the bell. jab in the right hand. And now backs out Five of danger. Five. Yo, yo. Fade into this way, he's catching with that uppercut. Yeah. But as soon as he throws those three punch combinations, you punch right with him. There's a left hook that came up a little short. Bibble likes, he doesn't like to throw away punches. He likes to land them cleanly and crispy. Right here, they weren't landing cleanly, but obviously they bothered Smith because there was a discouraged look in yeah. that round. Sergio, if you're Gerard Copa Bianco, what would you tell Joe Smith Jr.? Because it appears Joe needs something specific. Give him something he can work with. You want to move your head, not give a target to that jab, and bang the body away. That's going to be the easiest thing to try to hit with Bevo, because Bevo, he has good feet. He steps back nicely, and obviously he has that power jab. So bang the body up a little bit. Touch something. Joe Smith Jr. in the first round, coming out with a lot of pressure, and now looks like he's trying to solve a puzzle. Bevo tried to lure him in with the left hook right there around the gloves, but Smith didn't fall for it. Look at Smith, a guy who, even though he lost to Sullivan Barrera, he had Barrera down in the first round. He said, I can't believe Barrera crawled back up. Yeah, he's a hard hitter. And if he didn't break that jaw in that second round, he'd give him a great chance to finish off that fight. But he showed great courage in getting to the end after suffering his second broken jaw. And Bivol said, look, I, I know he has a lot of power. He said, I've sparred with a lot of guys like Joe. Bivol, with tremendous respect for Smith, all week, no question. Again, he's got a lot of class. But he said, look, I know Smith's going to come in here and try to make a fight for his people. Bevel just missed with a counter left hook that would have been devastating, but he's looking for the right shots. He threw a right hand to the bottom, straight right hand to Smith, trying to set something up upstairs. Very smart on Bevel's part. dictating when the war is going to be made. He opens up now. He's being very responsible in these early two, three rounds because he knows the power that Smith carries in those hands, but he's doing the right thing. Systematically, he's breaking them down, trying to discourage a power puncher like Smith. And he is applying a lot of pressure too, Sergio. It's almost sneaky it's... power, but he's not getting out of Smith's grill. Very smart. Bivol's a very smart fighter. As you can see, he hates being against the ropes. He Get wants to ahead. keep the fight in Freak. the center of the ring. The this high IQ by Bivol. Because any time you're, you're near the, the ropes, Smith is going to take advantage and just bomb away. You don't want to give him that kind of confidence. Joe Smith able to touch him with the right hand there. Kind of bounce it off the left eyebrow of Dimitri Bivol. But this is what we mean when we say amateur pedigree. We say the off guy's got nearly 300 Break. amateur fights. This is what down. we mean. Let's go to LZ Granderson, LZ. Thanks, thanks a lot, BK. We're looking at two fighters with tell the two different backgrounds. When I talked to Bivol about where he was from, and as you can tell, he's of Asian descent. His mother's Korean. He talked glowingly about the background, the city he grew up in Russia, the fact that it was very diverse. I was actually surprised by that because I didn't think there were a lot of Koreans in Russia, but apparently there's a large Korean population, and he felt very welcome and very much at home. On the flip side, Mr. Joe Smith Jr., well, let's just say he came from the school of hard knocks. A lot of fights growing up, very rough neighborhood. He even showed the scar remaining on his neck from getting cut in his neck. So he's used to being an underdog. He's used to fighting with the crowds against him. Fortunately, this crowd is with him, but he's got a really tough opponent. Obviously, the champ. We'll see how this plays out. But two men, two different backgrounds. We'll see who comes out on top. Back to you, BK. Yeah, LZ, there's no question. This is 
really a check of his character. You can see that left eye is already starting to puff up a bit. There, there is a gap in talent here, gap in skill. Yeah, we asked Bevo, what does he think about Joe Smith? He said he's basic, but very strong. I'll break him down. He's willing to take his time and pick his spots. He's been smart round four. Bevo in the black trunks, again, the WBA titleist at 175 pounds. Sergio, do you have a, a favorite? We were talking Bevo, Better Bev, Kovalev, Vazdik. Anybody stand out to you specifically? I think Better Bevo, his performance in his last fight was just impressive. He got up from the canvas, he showed courage. Devastating puncher as well. I think uh, the light heavyweight division is just dominated by Eastern Europeans, and they're all scary. I think it's up for Joe Smith now. You see the punches landed. It is wider than I even thought. 46 to 7. Can Joe Smith be inspired? Can he close the talent gap? It's, it's discouraging when you're fighting an economical, precise puncher like Bevo because he doesn't waste punches. Everything is hard, just like he displayed right there. A right hand to the body and miss with the left hook. Smith coming in. And now Bevo holding on. Smith knows if I get my man hurt, that's the time. You might only get one chance. I think Smith felt he landed something on that last exchange. I think he did too. It was a glancing overhand right. And Smith told us anytime I land my hands on anyone, I hurt him. Smith trying to make the most of it. You can see the survival skills are there as well for B ball. He's able to move. He was able to clutch just for a moment. And now he fires back with a body shot. No measure. Straight up the back. middle comes B ball. From the corner, Smith's corner saying, don't follow him. Jab. Bevo told us that he loves fainting. He loves using his legs. Right now, I seen something. Right before his back was going to hit the ropes, he spinned around and stayed in the middle of the ring. He didn't back all the way up to the other side of the ring. Very smart ring generalship on Bevo's part. Yeah, so many subtle like things. I'm glad you pointed that out, Sergio. There's subtle things that he does there that are just beautiful to watch. It's like he's playing chess with his feet. It, it really is impressive that such a big puncher is really good with his feet like that and e economical with his power. Able to block smart. that shot as well, blocking the right hand from Joe Smith Jr. Smith almost thinking southpaw for a second. Trying the hook off southpaw, at least changing his body around. I don't think Joe Smith has a bad strategy in this fight. He just can't right get that head, jab right through. Right Dimitri Bebo's defense is excellent. I got you. I'm right here. Right, he he is again trying to solve a puzzle from a guy who is fundamentally sound. Head. Break, break. High ring the IQ. It's for the and bell. Smith, to his credit, when he thought he had his man hurt, hurt went after him with everything he had. Bebo able to get through. You win the round. The only thing is you're following him a little bit too much, but you got that round. Get that eye going. Go. Mouthpiece. Listen, just don't follow. Just be a little He's more slippery, patient. He's slippery, but we no. jump. His body. Yeah. Get some inspo right here. Go. You win that round big. You did very good this round, man. Do the same thing. Hurt him. It hurt him. And if it start off. Throw a jab, hit that body, and then go up top. I'm telling you, right? Look, Joe Smith told us anything I punch, I hurt, and he clearly caught Bevo's attention right here. I don't know if he was hurt, but right, this is how you could tell if someone's hurt if they grab. That caught Bevo's attention. That was cleaner than I thought it was. I'm gonna be honest. From our angle, I thought I think he caught him. I think Christy said he caught him on a glance. Oh, better than a glance. The re really flush. Bevo's reaction is how I knew he caught right. his attention. Round five, so right. Joe Smith has some clean. success. His corner telling me won that round big. Certainly landed the best shot. Right. Chris, stop, did he even stop. win that round? I don't think he won that round. I think he did his best round and landed some clean punch, but I don't think he won it. He didn't win the round, but he won momentum, and that's all yep. you need. A hint of success with a good, hard shot. Watch the break, break. Watch that elbow. So I agree with you, Chris. I thought Beaver won the round. You've got to count him up, and one good shot can't win it for you unless you drop the guy. And Beaver certainly wasn't that close. Smith tried that overhand right again. I doubt it's going to work with an educated boxer like Beaver. He should try to set that up, go downstairs, touch him somewhere else. 
He was able to land a right hand just a break, few seconds break. ago. So watch your head, you're get cut. Joe Smith takes a deep breath, tries to wade in, Off his head. and Don't has to block those down. shots from Bivol. Bivol, Bivol, Sergio, just does not let you walk in. You no. Know? That's just another thing he does well. And look at his face. He's like a poker face. It, it yeah. never changes expression. He's just an excellent fighter, a dangerous fighter. A hard hook from Bivol. Smith has a, again, it's strange to say when a guy's had a, his jaw broken twice, but he's got a good jaw. <laughs> he's, got, he's got a good beard. That was a really pretty move on Bivol's part. Just when Joe Smith was trying to attack him and get him towards the ring, he turns around and pushes back Joe against the ring. Just ring generalship at its best with Dimitri Bivol. Smith trying to come in, left shoulder first, keep his right hand tucked under his chin. A loaded weapon looking for that one shot. Bivol is supremely confident, and you can see the concentration on his face. Able to get out of danger. Smith is stalking, doing everything he can. Bivol doesn't waste time. He, every punch is, is, he tries to land every punch perfect. That's economical on his part. Doubles up on the jab, and he hits him with that second jab. Able to spray out a few more and keep Smith at bay. Sergio, you know this, but when you're a guy that moves, the size of the ring matters. It's a pretty big ring, 20 by 20. That favors a Dimitri Bivol is trying to be active moving around it. it listen, I, I was definitely a mover because I didn't have Bivol's power, but Bivol, he told us in the fighter meetings, I love foot feigning, I love defense, I like controlling things with my jab, I'm more than a puncher. You told me in the fighter meetings that you did, that your nickname was Latino Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Final second, Smith trying with everything he has. Good job. 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 Good you go one, one, two. Use your body, use your body when you're punching. That is Israel Madrimov, the dream. Won his second pro fight tonight. Vicious knockout win over Frank Rojas, so again, he was in the hospital, but doing much better. But Bivol came out to watch his fight. Madrimov, of course, you'd expect him to come out and watch the main event. But Bivol was out here watching the fights for the guys in his stable. Stable mates, you see Miguel Cotto do that all the time at big fights. He'd come out early, watch his young guys, go back, get changed, get ready to fight. Oh. I love that, you know, Sergio's your main event guy, but you're, you're out saying, you know, Bivol's out watching the fights. <laughs> I, love, I love seeing that too, because it gives your young fighters confidence. You know, a, a, a star, a legend is watching you fight and they're supporting you all the way. That's slipper. It is very wet in the corner. See Gary Rosado trying to dry that up. Thank you. And they're trying to dry that up now so no one slips in the corner. I liked how Chris Mannix, Joe Smith got after it, even in the final seconds. Like, let me bum rush him, do something. I'm going to use some energy here. He's Look, trying. You have to be in great shape to fight a Joe Smith because you know he's going to be almost impossible to knock down and virtually impossible to knock out. So he's going to keep coming throughout this fight. And Bivol, for, to his credit, has experience going deep into fights. Now, Bivol outlanding Smith Jr., but 80 to 60. You know, oh, throwing over 100 more. Smith maybe landing a little more than, than I thought, Sergio. Yeah, and you know what? A lot, a, lot, a lot of punches, you don't know. Punch stat numbers like that, I really don't like to follow. It's, you can't really judge effective punching. Just no. because you're throwing punching and you're blocking them, they're not landing. Well, you use it if it's instructive. But we'll wonder if there's another way of looking at it. I mean, certainly Bivol is, is just picking Smith apart and is doing it beautifully. Smith Look, has given it everything he has. He had his moment, definitely caught him flush with that right hand. Bivol able to eat it and survive. CompuBox doesn't tell the story. If you have an educated eye, Bivol's landed the better punches. Of course, Joe Smith lands the harder punches, but precise punching, that's what gets an opponent's attention. You know, we're 10 minutes away from the International Boxing Hall of Fame. It's in Canastota, New York. 
Going to be a fun summer this year. Donald Curry, Julian Jackson, Buddy McGirt, speaking of Long Island fighters, Tony DeMarco, Teddy Atlas, former colleague, will be up here inducted into the Hall of Fame, Lee Samuels, Don Elbaum, and Guy Jutras, former referee. So it'll be a fun class, a lot of fighters from the 80s. I'm glad to uh, hear that Donald Curry's being accepted, the Cobra. Yeah, yes. I loved watching him fight. Former welterweight champion, number one pound for pound at one point. You think he's a Hall of Famer? I knew you were going to say that. I don't know why. A lot of people question Donald Curry, right. but he was a two-division champion. OK. Good right. fighter. I, I, OK, so obviously, yes. no. But look, but no. every Hall of Fame has a different line. You want to go there? So I'd say yes. What are you saying, Chris? The Hall of Fame every year inducts three people no matter what. That should not be the case. Baseball, I think, has it right. 75% gets in. Mm -hmm. The Boxing Hall of Fame needs to adopt that to have any credibility. Okay. Well, not to have any credibility. Add to its credibility. Because there are That's years, Brian, that there aren't three Hall of Famers. Okay. This is how I know he was a Hall of Famer. Ask the top fighters if Donald Curry belongs in the Hall of Fame, they say yes, including hey, myself. I think maybe he's, I'll throw something at you from the Baseball Hall of Fame. Maybe he's a peak Hall of Famer. He's number one pound for pound before he lost to Lloyd Hunnigan, the welterweight title. Anyway, early June, June 8th and 9th, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Big party. We will be there next Friday in Philadelphia. Tevin Farmer, Katie Taylor, Gabe Rosado. Tevin Farmer and Katie Taylor, but Farmer has wanted to go back to his hometown, and he has just looked terrific last couple of fights. Yeah, Tevin Farmer's had a chance to really showcase his skills. He's in with Joan O'Carroll, a guy that doesn't have a lot of power either, so he'd like to see if he can go out there and put somebody away. But I'm anxious, Brian, to see Tevin Farmer in a significant fight. Can they make a Gervonta Davis fight? Can they make a Vasily Lomachenko fight? Those are the fights I want to see Tevin Farmer in. Well, that's top of the food chain stuff, but you know, Farmer is there, and skill-wise, he'd be difficult to handle. Round seven here, Dimitri Bivol with an outstanding performance. As Sergio Mora has pointed out in many subtle ways, but he is just a blue chipper. As a world titleist, and Joe Smith a level below, doing everything he can to try to close that gap. Go, punch it has head. been difficult. Like I said earlier, Joe Smith, we know what he is. He's a blue collar, nine to five, grind, tough as nails. And Bevo, he's the opposite, an educated puncher. He doesn't waste any energy, doesn't waste space in the ring. He knows when to punch. Just a, an all around high IQ boxer puncher, Bevo is. One thing's for sure. I didn't think I'd be in a Hall of Fame controversy out here. Like the one day I'm not at MLB Network, I get you know, talking Hall of Fame. All right, we'll do it. Do well, three guys really deserve to get in every single year, no matter what? Are there always three Hall of Famers? I guess not. I would say it wouldn't have to be. There are some again, years too, Brian. Oh, hard jab from b -ball. Smith looks hurt. Smith doubled over there for a moment. Smith's back was turned against us, but I think that was a wide left hook around the guard that landed. Smith has never been down. Oh, he looks him. hurt. That hook didn't quite land. That right hand did. Bivol now picks up the pace. And Smith still looking to counter with a big shot. That's what makes him dangerous. Oh, he ate a right hand coming in. Bivol with a short, crisp right hand. And now an uppercut. Wow, he is using the total arsenal. As Smith was burrowing forward, he was catching things on the way in. Yes, he was, and Bivol just spinned out of there and didn't back up all the way to the other side of the ring. Very economical with the ring, the space, the punch selection. Very impressed with Dimitri Bivol, I am. Yeah, Smith is very tough, he's very game, but Bivol looks great. Right ahead, break! Get back, let him go, let him go. Final 30 seconds here, round seven. By the way, we asked Bivol, you know, anyone stand out to you among the other champions? And he then went and proceeded to name all three. And he did it honestly. He's like, look, they've all got something going. And he's a very respectful champ. He has great respect for Better BF, Kovalev, and Volzdik. He said, look, they're all, they're all there. What's unfortunate is, unless something significant changes, Dimitri Bivol's going to have a very hard time getting a fight with any of them. There is talk of 168. Five seconds, it's for the bell. That he could go down, he said he could go down to 168 pounds. 
Maybe fight Callum Smith, who is the Ring Magazine side, no. super middleweight champion of the world. I think that's more He's likely than not. Probably not in his next fight. But early next year, at the latest, we see him drop down and fight at 168 because if he wins a title at 168, he puts himself in the mix for Canelo and Golovkin if they decide to move up to 168. Here's the punch that you thought was a jab because the back, uh, Joe Smith's back was turned against us, but he turned it into a hook and it landed cleanly. Caught Joe Smith's attention. He had a grab on which was a smart thing to do on his part, but that definitely caught his attention. Landed, landed cleanly on the jaw. Wow, and that's, again, his jaw's been broken twice, and yet he has never been down, and you can see what, he's buckled, he's hurt, but he doesn't go down easy. Now, Bivol is systematically breaking mm. down a very tough opponent. And Bivol has shown all the skills. Round eight, water, Brian Kenny with Sergio water. Mora, and Chris Mannix here ringside. Sugar Ray Leonard, Kay Adams also with us here, LZ Granderson as well. Thank you. Hope you're enjoying the night here in upstate New York. Uh, Dimitri Bivol showing so much skill. I think there's something too, Chris, to Chris, if he does can get down to 168 and fight Callum Smith and get a guy again who has multiple belts, who has a ring magazine title. I think he's number two according to ESPN, so maybe it's not universally acclaimed, but basically if he's the champ, this is extra cachet to beating the champion. Absolutely, and we saw him at the fighter means yesterday compare and contrast it to what Maurice Hooker was. Dimitri Bivol was drinking water, he looked comfortable, he's very easily making 175, and he believes he can comfortably make 168. But they think that Marcus Brown is on the radar as well. Brown who's on the run now, on the way up. And Bivol's promoter said, even with all the politics, it is possible to make good fights. And you'd want to see that. You want to see, uh, you want to see Bivol tested again by, by world class. And let's Brown. see how those skills perform. Brown Bivol will, will be an interesting matchup. I would like to see that. Right now, Joe Smith Jr. is here in the ring. And it's the eighth round, and he is not quitting. You know that. Tries with the right hand. Tries with the uppercut. Oh, push him down. Break. Off his head. Bivol able to keep distance. But he's always within punching range. It's a quiet round with both of them, so Bivol's maybe taking this round off, and Joe Smith. Oh, another hard shot. He is able to hook right off that jab and throw a hard, short hook and bounce it right off Smith. And landed in the last round, he tried it again. Very successful with that. He's heard him twice already with that hook. Lands with the jab, right to the nose. Now power shots from Bivol, backing Smith up. Smith says, bring it. Final 30 seconds. Even when he partially blocked them, you can hear the thudding power of Dimitri Bivol. Smith tries to jab out of the corner, and he does. B-ball misses with the right hand. Get that arm back. Another outstanding round for the champ. That's interesting. And Andy Mashianov, first thing he says, I don't know how this guy's still standing. <laughs> You're that. really doing beautiful stuff. You know, the many things to be impressed with Dimitri Bivol, his conditioning is right up there. He just doesn't look tired at all yeah. as we get into the ninth round. Either we threw up there, you could see the uh, the over under. It's nine rounds. We're in the ninth round now. So, th and this seems to be down. right at the crux push his head down, right? of where Smith looks a little beaten, a little gassed. Plenty of will, but it's not his night. Not against this guy. Too much skill, too much class. And Bivol just looks tremendous. And you can't criticize Bivol because, look, when he fought Chalemba, KG veteran, Break. and he fought a That's former champion in Pascal, <laughs> another KG smart veteran that knows how to survive and can punch. Now he's fighting Break. the oh. dead of oh. Wow. Now, Smith, 
meant to do that. You know, he didn't have you to do that. You do that again, I'll take a point off. You understand that? All right? Come here. Come here. Give me your glove. Let's keep it clean. I'm taking a point next time. Ready? Right? Time in. What do you think of Gary Rosado not taking a point? No, that was the right call, but that was frust all frustration on yeah. Joe Smith's part. He can't do nothing, can't get nothing started, so he resorted so, to being dirty. I like that as well, that you can warn him once. He hasn't been dirty yet. That was dirty, but that you can say, hey, look, that's it. Break! Can't right. do that. Pure frustration, you're right, from Joe Smith Jr. He's trying with everything he has. He finally had the man on top of him and thought, let me throw him. <laughs> At least he can do something. I want to beat this guy up. Well, look, not for nothing. I, I agree with you, BK, that they shouldn't have taken away a point. Okay, that's great. But I also like the fact that Smith actually tried something. He tried to get dirty, tried to get Bivol's attention. You can't do it with your punches. Do it wrestling. Just try to get under his skin somehow. You're pro body slam? <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'm pro get dirty if you have to. Try Smith? something. You can't do that, clearly. Clearly, hard hook from Bivol. Smith is still on his feet. I like that Bivol is, well, occasionally, he has different velocity on his punches, and he will throw a harder shot now and then. You know, Sergey, uh, to your earlier, Sergey, to your earlier point, I was critical of Bivol after the Pascal fight, after the Chalemba fight. Those are two fights I thought he could have stepped on the gas and been more effective. This is different. He is pressuring, he is looking for the knockout. He's just fighting a guy with a granite chin. Yeah, Bivol, Bivol's corner said, I don't know how he's still standing. Well, I'll tell you how he's still standing. He's fighting Joe Smith Jr. Bivol just with a beautiful double up on the hook, body and head. They're chanting for Joe Smith here in upstate New York. Trying to help his will to stay in this fight as he tries to throw out a long jab, hoping that he can follow it up with that right hand. Ten, ten seconds, it's for the bell. Stops punching, B ball picks it up. Every time you throw a combination, he steps around. He's right there for you to that right hand. You know what I mean? He's right there for you to hit. Mm -hmm. Well, here we're gonna see the hip toss on Joe Smith's part, but not for nothing. He picked him up and then he thought twice and kind of wanted to let him down slowly. Maybe he realized, hey, I'm in a boxing fight, not a street fight. I don't know that he, I don't know that he wanted to let him down slowly there. I think that was instinct. The tough guy came out of him, then he realized, I'm in a boxing match. I'm with you, Sergio. He was conflicted there at the end. You could sense it morally. You're right. By the way, May 4th, that's the middleweight championship. You saw it. Canelo Alvarez defending his title against Danny Jacobs. We heard from Akim Barak earlier. I like that they were respectful on the press tour. You don't have to trash talk to drum up publicity for the middleweight championship of the world from the real middleweight champ. You don't got to body slam people. Keep no body slamming. Keep it classy. <laughs> we know why Joe Smith did that. And you can see he did instigate it as well. Wasn't that Bivol was leaning on him? He went and found him. And power punches last round. Yikes, nine zip. Well, I like the one thing Sergio, maybe I, Smith was trying to throw a longer jab. Now he's never able to follow it up with the right hand, but that's your only shot, right? It's very frustrating fighting a guy you can't touch because Bivo does have fast feet. He knows how to back up. We know that he knows how to use the ring, but the space, like right there, look, Joe Smith came up short with three punches, two jabs and an overhand right. That's discouraging. That's frustrating. That was a nice jab from Bivo there. Landed flush on the chin and again on Smith. First shot at a world title belt for Joe Smith Jr. He's 24 and two. 20 of his 24 wins by knockout. So this is his shot at the title. But this is what it's like when you find a, a guy in his prime. Bivol's 28 and has put it all together. Just beautiful, beautiful punches there by Bivol. Got a, an angle on him, punch from that angle. And the thing about Joe Smith, the thing about power punches, they're used to punching something. They're always accustomed. They don't train to miss. So when they finally do miss like they do there, they get discouraged, frustrated. They don't know what to do and resort to dirty tactics. That's an underrated hook too, isn't it, Chris, from B-Ball? That is hard. Again, we, have, we haven't seen Smith fly out of the ring yet because he's Joe Smith. He is tremendously accurate. And to your point about the defense, Sergio, there are some guys that fight 
and they can make, avoid those punches, slip them. Floyd Mayweather was one of them. Bebo just catches everything. Like, though he's not trying to avoid those punches, he's just pawing them away. And he steps back far enough to counter, like, not far enough to where he's away. And just, like, that's a good point. He always in the position to punch. That, that's what makes him dangerous. Bivol dancing now. Trying to stay out of harm's way. Smith doing everything he can. For the bell. As I mentioned, Bivol. Good shot there. That might have hurt Bivol right there. That was a ball right. Right at the bell. Wow. Where did you go on the left? Naga. Why he's gonna drop on you? Just hit him in the face. What the fuck did you do at the end? You okay? What the fuck is going on with your left? This fight is gonna be ours. Just relax. Just play with him. I thought this round was over, Sergio. I guess Dimitri Bivol thought that too. At the bell. It's never over. You always have to be leery of a puncher. Joe Smith told us, anything I touch, I hurt. And he showed it and demonstrated his power there. I mean, as the bell was ringing, just when it's over, and Bivol was shook. So just as we're singing his praises and say, look, give credit to Joe Smith Jr., he has real success. So it's round 11, and he is rejuvenated. Well, this is it for Joe Smith Jr. This is his opportunity. Jump right back on him. Has Bivol been wobbled? That's a hard jab straight up from Bivol. Well, this is where your poker face comes to the fore, Sergio, right? Because he was shook as he went to his went to his stool. But now it's not betraying him. Not only the poker face, but the movement and using his feet, like he said he likes to do. Because he's gonna need it in this round. Smith lunging in, tries with the hook. Joe Smith Jr. has no knockouts after the ninth round. If he has that power, it's usually early. This is also his first time past 10 rounds. But he is the aggressor in this round, there's no question. I would like to see Joe Smith make his way in with a powerful jab anywhere, either the chest, the torso, upstairs, but move your way in with a power jab. Yeah, now he's trying for that one shot, and it's going to be difficult. He's going to get picked apart. Bebo did it right there with a jab in the right hand. The crowd is back into it. That landed by Smith. Can he pull it out of nowhere? B-ball is slightly different now. Not quite as in command. He is still poised, and you see there. Beautiful work by B-ball. A jab and a hook to follow up. That's the thing about fighting devastating punchers. They always have that puncher chance from round one to round 12. And Bivol, no matter how experienced he is, realizing that now. And you have to give him credit, Sergio. I mean, I'm not saying you're not. I'm saying we have to. He, he's fighting all three minutes down to the last second that was. Not giving away a second. 45 seconds now. Right hand by Smith, partially blocked. But any time you touch him, that can lead to something else. No, even if they're partially blocked, after you've been hurt like that, even when you block the shots, they still have an effect on you. Smith trying a little something different. Now you see the blood trickling down the face of Joe Smith. So he's been caught this round. B-ball has definitely connected. Done his share of damage. Joe Smith has been waiting for years hey, for this hey, title hey. shot, his whole career for this title shot. He's going to lay it all out in that 12th round. And the fact that he's back in this now in the 11th oh. is remarkable. Yeah, he knows he's in a fight, Joe. No question. Joey. Keep 
those hands up. Okay. Let me get that mouthpiece. Joe, so, see when he steps okay. around. <laughs> He's wide open, flat hook. Joe, you not sit out. Boy, this is your last one. Yes, that way I get Joe, every time you throw your punch. Don't stay in the middle. Don't stay in the middle. Just go relax. That round was all Joe Smith Jr. He was seen red the entire three minutes, landed a chopping right hand. And when you have your opponent hurt, it doesn't take many shots or a clean shot to remind them of that, of being hurt. So that right there caught Bebo's attention again. You get your money's worth tonight. Final round! Twelfth and final round. World title fight at light heavyweight. Joe Smith making it work using every second of every round. And at the last second of the 10th round, he gets back in this fight. He has lost most every round as Bivol has been terrific. But he was definitely hurt, and he is definitely not quite the same in these last rounds. By the way, good translation in the corner from Bivol. What the bleep is going on? What the <laughs> bleep just that? happened? <laughs> well, that's what was said. I guess the F word doesn't translate well in Russian. Joe Smith Jr. is shot at the title. He's got two minutes. B-ball lands back, shows his class and his fire. Look, B-ball isn't out here dancing. He's out here trading. He's just smart about it. But Joe Smith has that world-class power, the equalizer. And he's been able to rock B-ball twice in this fight. Right hand, way off. Gary Rosado has done a good job in this fight. Oh, push with that arm. Smith trying to jab his way in. At least just throwing a blinder out there so he can land the hammer. Put that arm back. No measure, no measure. This is too quiet of a round oh, if I was uh, Joe Smith Jr. Head. I would let it all hang out. This is a championship fight. You had your man hurt. Go after him. Bombs away. Well, he's been doing that, but right that final minute here, one minute to go, has been quiet. Remember, Bivol answered with a lot of hard shots to drive Smith back. Can he keep him at bay? Hey, don't push it on the Bivol is standing right in front of him and lands a hard right hand. Great counter shot there by Bivol. That caught Joe Smith's attention. But in the 12th round, the power probably is not there like it should have been in the early rounds. It still caught Smith's attention. I, tell you, I don't know who number one is in the 175 pound division, but there's nobody more skilled than Dimitri Bivol. Yeah, Bivol has looked terrific. He's made certainly a statement in this fight. Bivol landed two counter right hands that hurt Joe Smith, but Smith is so tough that he hit it well, but his legs aren't really under him with that second right counter that Bivol landed. Final seconds now. We're in the final 10. Smith is ten running seconds, out of time. He really burned a lot of gas in the 11th. And now Bivol has him hurt. Hard right hand. Smith has never been down. Bivol on the attack, but it's over. Wow. What a way to finish. That's a statement. Those two right hand counters earlier was what caught his attention. That third one finally did the job. The onslaught came just a little bit too late. Five seconds more, it would have been over. Bivol is a little cloudy, by the way. See the way he's blinking his eyes? He was a changed fighter after that shot at the end of the 10th round. It looked like after the first minute, he was able to get his bearings, but he was not the same fighter. That shot had an impact. No question. And yet he's still able to do that? Say, hey, final 10 seconds, you think you're going to beat on me? Nope. Here's how it's going to end. That was impressive. Very impressive. I mean, just Sergio, the class of this guy. Such a high level of skill and talent. That was and the guts of that guy. That was impressive. Im re impressive resilience on Bivol's part and impressive power on Smith's part. It's just unbelievable to, to always give power a chance, even in the final round. Well, again, you've got to be able to deliver that power. 
And Smith, to his credit, never gave up. A hard man to find, and at the slightest, the slightest bit of room, Bivol will hurt you. If you let up on him for a moment, he's not just there to outbox you, he will hurt you. But Smith is dangerous every round. Every round, with, with a power puncher, you always got to be on your feet. And when Bebo finally got hurt, it was towards the end of a round. After he heard the 10 second warning, he kind of let his guard down and it cost. Bebo had a lot of success, Sergio, with the hook as well. Hard shots, hurt Smith several times. I think Bebo fought a great, great fight against a power puncher, a dangerous puncher in Smith. He took his chances when he had his moment hurt. He had his opponent hurt, he took the moment. He tried to get the stoppage. Five, 10 more seconds, he probably could have got it. Yep, and Smith has never been down, certainly never been out, even with a broken jaw twice that he had to get fixed. Look at him, there's a warrior right there. So much guts. Woo, let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards, and before we do, a round of applause for two fighters that both had the will to win in this ring here tonight. Don Trello scores at 118 to 110. Glenn Feldman and Tom Schreck both score at 119 to 109. To the winner by unanimous decision, still undefeated and still the WBA light heavyweight Champion of the world, Dimitri Bevo. Those are good judges. They did a good job. Smith won probably two rounds, maybe one round. It's possible. But again, Dimitri Bevo with a statement here to fight against a very game tough guy with real world class power. And he makes his statement to say, hey, you know what? You shouldn't be so sure that it is better Biev or Kovalev that's at, or Vostek that's at the top of the food chain. <laughs>